Today, let's talk about the micro side of things again. Once again, talking about fighting. Last time, we talked about flicks. This time, let's go over strafes and strafing techniques and go a little more in depth than simply just swing. Including a couple examples of what I believe to be the perfect strafe shot and why you should always try to not panic or get too excited during fights. Dear Lord! So, strafe shooting. What is it? You know what it is. You know what I'm talking about. When everybody goes side to side really quick, opposite directions, taking quick, short shots. Now, what does it do? Uh, why do people do this? Simply put, it's the best way to be very mobile and accurate instead of being a sitting duck, sitting there spraying and whiffing. If you're whiffing, actually, as soon as you register in your mind that your shots are not connecting, just control yourself and stop shooting and reset. The faster you do this, the faster you'll probably kill them. I found in my experience that this is because usually I'm feeling some sort of pressure whether that it's internal or external whether I'm putting it on myself or you know the enemy is causing me to feel this pressure but sometimes we just get this feeling that we need to get this kill ASAP we need to rush our shot to get this kill ASAP but that only leads to us kind of just fumbling it more and whiffing more likely I think a good tip to relieve that pressure fighting with your team or behind some util it'll make you feel safer and therefore make you more confident in your shots and fights how many of you out there also had this happen to them where they had a round where you clutch it up all by yourself Yourself, and at the end you thought you had a teammate behind you. Speaking a little bit more on pressure, the faster you shoot, the more inaccurate you will be. Now we need to take our time. This next bit might sound a little bit brain dead or very basic, but hey man, when the pressure's on, it might help you out in those moments and it doesn't make it any less true. Right, so we need to take our time. Now, obviously we can't be at a snail's pace, but you'd be surprised with how much time we actually have in the heat of the moment sometimes. Uh, timing is everything. Even being a little bit off, whether it be like I, I started shooting before I fully stopped moving or taking a fraction of a second too long to line up my aim led me to die instead of a kill. Timing is everything. So we got to keep these two things in mind. Take your time when you're lining up shots, but also take your time in between your shots. Anytime you shoot more than like five bullets, if your recoil isn't like fully reset, it's going to kick very high and it's going to start to go all over the place. It's going to start feeling very random because it is. So you have to let your recoil properly reset or even if you have good aim, like your crosshair is on them, it's gonna make your good aim worthless. This leads to us sometimes thinking, oh, my aim is off or you know, we've all been there. Where are my bullets going, etc. Even if your crosshair was dead on the target, the bullets went flying everywhere else. So yeah, wait for your recoil. But wait a minute, how do I take my time waiting? Well, in most cases, that's gonna be with our movement or strafing. So you take a strafe to the left or right, swing, whatever, while your recoil is resetting. However, we can also minimize the time that we have to wait for our recoil to reset if we just never let the recoil get to that point. Basically, don't shoot like five bullets at a time. So we try to minimize the time we have to wait by just shooting less in our initial burst. This is why a lot of people shoot like one to two bullets and then they readjust and kill quickly. So in essence, we need time to line up our shot and we need time in between our shots. And that's where basically strafe shooting comes in, where our movement comes in. Our movement buys us that time. One last little strafe technique try this out swing white swing but then you take like a single step or two back inward before you shoot this actually works a decent bit but i think it kills your first bullet accuracy well all right then but what does this perfect strafe shot look like it's when you achieve these max speed strafes cleanly like back to back consecutively and accurately shoot and it looks like you never stop moving but you're still accurate here's a couple of examples Take notice how for every one of these kills, I'm starting my strafe in one direction, and before I'm even done shooting, I'm already headed the other way. Now, if you watch this back in real time, it's gonna look like I'm basically moving and shooting it, but there's a very brief moment where I shoot, move to my left, and then shoot again. And that's when I'm accurate and get the insta headshot. Aside from the illegal glitch that makes this peak unreactable, just look at how fast that was. She started from her left, swung right as she's aiming, not only takes her shot and hits it, in that instant, she's already moving left again. So let's talk a little bit about slicing the angle versus pre-aim and swing. They're both valid, they both have their place, but I think when you just simply pre-aim and swing, it's like way too committed to like that one angle. You can't just disregard everything else. So that's why I think overall, don't be lazy and use slicing angles with the silent step every time if you can help it. Based off this footage, you strafe and you slice the angles, you can clear for off angles in the meantime, it helps you isolate all of these angles and it gives you time to react to what you see. So your reflex comes into play and then you quickly adjust, take a shot and then strafe or tuck back into cover. Rinse and repeat. 
it makes you a super hard target to hit, gives you more opportunities for kills or clearing stuff, and in general, you become a problem for the enemy. Here's a weird niche tip that may or may not help you out. If you're ever in a situation like this, strafing in the same direction makes for an easy shot to line up for you. It will for the enemy as well, but only if they are ready for it. It's easy because you're basically there walking with your crosshair. All right, so fighting in general has to do with being able to read, react, and predict. Movement works in conjunction with our aim. Don't only think of them as like two separate things, movement plus aim, but rather movement contributes to our aim overall. It makes it easier. With the added bonus of juking our opponents so we can break their aim. Strictly speaking, in terms of fighting, not strategy, read their movement, react, adjust aim, predict, and lead your aim sometimes. Another prediction example is, of course, pre-firing. When you know or predict someone is going to be behind some cover and you think he's going to swing or you're swinging into him. Just pre-fire that spot. Short. Nice. 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 Oh, the crazy pre-fire. Good shit. People actually kind of read movement a lot, so when we're strafing, while we're aiming for the opponent, we're also breaking our opponent's aim. This nuance can lead to our movements manipulating how our opponents miss. And it's also why it's so jarring for a fully strafing target to stop on a dime and kill someone instantly. So in the end, you full swing, shoot one or two bullets, then move again, swinging back the original direction, then shoot again. Rinse and repeat. One final tip is just be creative with your movement. Don't be so rigid and predictable and readable. And just use different approaches to mix them up. Sometimes you're gonna jiggle, sometimes you're white swing. You know, just don't do the same thing every time. When you're swinging out or swinging back and forth, don't just go left, right, left, right, left, right. You know, sometimes go the same direction. Just try to mix your opponents up and you're guaranteed to find more success. Now I'm gonna give you two more examples on how to use strafe shooting and slicing the angles effectively. Nice. Let's fucking go. Easy. So right off the start, notice where I'm pre-aiming. It's not right at the corner. I'm holding it kind of in the open and then I swing into it. This next guy, I'm baiting him around the corner, the only piece of cover I have, and I'm luring him into me, away from his teammates. And I'm able to do this because of slicing the angle. Also, because I'm slicing every angle, even off angles, I can tell and see him if he's choosing to approach me which in this instance he was. So I'm making sure to not be too overcommitted and be in the open like he is. I'm luring him into me, putting himself in worse positions every step he takes outward. Meanwhile, I'm staying close to cover and I'm separating, isolating fights, luring him away from his help. They try to smoke me off, try to prevent me from getting the gun, and I wasn't able to isolate this time, but it was close and good damage. There's two in our spawn, two in our spawn. So after that last kill, we know two are in spawn and I know Jet's aiming. I throw the flash first to break your line of sight, and then I take a peek at the guys in spawn that are holding me. Again, only really focusing on strafe shooting. It's what allowed me to take multiple fights without being too committed, get some instant kill, and then isolate the rest. Again, the same way I killed the KO in the last clip. When I'm swinging, I'm kind of letting my crosshair hang there in case they're swung wide or having an off angle, and I'm just gonna react to what I see. So it looks like my aim is perfect for the raise. So now it's a 1v2, looking very doable. Now at this point in time, this is kind of what I have pictured in my head. I have Jet towards my left and Cypher holding spawn, so I'm prepping up this flash to hopefully get info or have one of those angles back off. When it pinged nothing, I realized both of them are playing anti then, so I take my chance to get this space where if the Cypher does check or swing, it's gonna be another isolated fight. I'm feeling like the Jet is being very timid or playing very safe, cause he knows that if he fights me, the Cypher can't help. So Cypher's probably gonna take first and Jet's gonna try to swing after his contact. And that's why taking that space to isolate those fights, he move. One enemy remains. Straight oh. Straight oh. Straight. 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 Straight.